Hello and welcome back. Today I'm with Dr. Kultep, Director of GI and Liver Center. We're at Vimmer Hospital and you are watching Health Matters Asia. Is gut health a serious problem in Thailand? Because I see that with the youngsters, there's such a change of diet going from Correct. traditional Thai cuisine to this junk food, high sugar, high fat. Correct. Obesity is out of control. Okay. And I just wonder, where are we in terms of gut health? Okay, so uh, basically the, the gut health, uh, I think it is changing from before. And like what you've just said, so it, it changed because of the diet pattern has changed. Uh, it changed because of the, the lifestyle has changed compared to the traditional Thai style. Uh, right now, I would, I would call it a little bit more westernized, mixed with the Thai style. So somehow, but, but may, may, maybe sometimes they keep selecting the, the both of the bad part <laughs> rather than both of the good part. <laughs> because any lifestyle would contain good parts anyway. So, so it is changing in terms of the, uh, the, 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 the disease itself or the, because of the lifestyle, they change in towards the metabolic syndrome, like fatty liver or obesity, which obesity can cause other GI disease or other gut health problems like constipation, like reflux, acid reflux, or even the change of the pattern of diet, let's say uh, with a rush in morning, then they skip breakfast, which is the most important meal. Then they may have like peptic ulcer disease or gastritis or something else because of the rush uh, time during the day. So, so those kind of problems keep coming back. And secondly, <clears throat> because they, they tend to eat something more fresh or hardly cooked, like let's say sashimi or sushi or, or whatever. Uh, then sometimes they may get some problem with bacterial infections or even the H. pylori infection, which, is, which will lead to uh, stomach, stomach inflammation, stomach ulcers or stomach cancer. So, so that has changed. Secondly, it's a change, I think it's a change of the population itself or, or the incidence of some disease like, like colon cancer or, or, or stomach cancer has been changing in the past 10 to 15 years. Before that, the risk of having colon cancer would be like more than 50 years of age. Right now, it tends to be lesser. And, and the, the number, I mean, the rank of colon cancer has been higher and higher uh, each five years. So, so I think it has, it's a combination of the lifestyle change and it's a combination of, of the population change as well. So, so it is changing, yes. And also, I would say that around 60-70% of the gut health problem, uh, like the, even the stomach, the bowel, the small bowel, the, the large bowel, 70% it's the functional problems, not the actual inflammation or not the actual ulcer. It's a functional problem, which is related to mental health. A lot of stress, a lot of rush, and a lot of like depressing uh, condition will lead to some problem in gut health anyway. Let's say someone may present with uh, stomach pain, like having a stomach ulcer, but actually not. It's just the function of the stomach has changed because of the mood or because of the stress. Or someone may present with uh, irritable bowel syndrome, like, stomach, uh, like uh, bowel pain, uh, diarrhea or constipation. But actually there is no inflammation or there's nothing inside. But it's just the function, the contraction has changed. The sensory of the bowel has changed because the bowel and the brain has been linked together. We call it big brain and little brain. So with mood change, with mental health change, the, the gut health would change anyway. How can we find out about our gut health? Is there a test that we can do? Yeah, uh, actually the, the gut health contains a few things. Uh, firstly, the, the functional part that I just said would, 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 would be checked by symptoms. Okay, you can check by symptoms easily, like having heartburn, having regurgitation, having stomach pain, or bowel movement change. Then, then there is a criteria. You might uh, see a doctor using a telemedication a service uh, just to check your symptoms. That's one thing. And another thing that, is, uh, that has been increasingly in the interesting part, it's a microbiome. The microbiome, which is actually it's a healthy bacteria 
or, or the helper bacteria that stays inside your, your, your intestine or your gut. Uh, normally, we digest some part of the food that we eat, but most of the part would be the bacteria that digest and, and leads to the metabolites, which is the end product. With that end product, we use it for our body. It has shown that it's been linked to many other symptoms, not just the gut. Sometimes the obesity, depression, autism uh, can be linked with the microbiome as well. So in the microbiome part, which can lead to uh, bowel pain, can lead to irritable bowel syndrome, can lead to constipation, can lead to um, some other part like cholesterol because it digests and it creates an end product. When you have the, the bad bacteria, it creates another end product that you don't use and it causes other symptoms. So, so this can be checked as well. But this requires a, a specific test, uh, which can be checked by the stool. And we send the stool to extract the DNA of the bacteria, and we'll know the bacteria. But another problem, uh, I think everywhere, we thought that when we don't have something, we need to replace with something. But actually, it's not. The, the microbiome is about the balancing of the bacteria inside us and the diversity of the bacteria inside us. Actually, it's like another country inside you. It, it, it's about population. So it doesn't mean that if you don't have bacteria A, then you need to eat bacteria A to get it. It's just actually, you have A, B, C, D, but actually you need to have a good one more than the bad one. And you need to have, in the good one, you need to have many. Not like, okay, Mr. A and Mr. A million times. You have to have Mr. A, 10,000, Mr. B, 10,000, Mr. C, 10,000. So you need to have many, many diversity in the good bacteria as well. And is that influenced by diet or how do we get the perfect microbiome? Yeah, actually it is influenced by diet. But since overall, I think it's a global condition now, <laughs> we change our diet pattern <laughs> almost everywhere. So when we change our diet pattern, uh, but we, we are not changing since, but since we, was, we were born. We are changing midway. But actually, the, the bacteria has been set up since the day you were born. Uh, when, you, when, you, when, you, when you get a normal delivery, right? When you come out, then you get some fluid inside, you get all the bacteria inside, then that starts from there. And then, with the diet that you had in the childhood, it stabilized the bacteria to the teenagerhood. And then in adult part, you have some set of bacteria. But then, after teenager, you start having like all the earnings, you can go anywhere, you can like eat everywhere, you want to eat something. Then you eat differently. Then that starts causing a problem because the sets of bacteria digest something. Then you put another thing that they cannot digest. Then they start changing on and on. And also with the antibiotics using. So it changed almost everything. Uh, with, with an inappropriate, I would say inappropriate antibiotics using over the counters or not in, inaccurate dosage or short of the dosage, then, then it starts causing problems because it continues. The, the antibiotic cannot, cannot select a good one and a bad one. It's like you throwing a napalm bomb <laughs> and then destroy almost everything. Right? So, so, so the good one is a little weaker normally. So the bad one will uh, start conquering the good one later on. So that starts causing a problem because the bad one creates a different metabolites that may affect you. Yeah. So, so that's why it, 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 it would change because of the diet pattern, because of the lifestyle and almost everything. If that happened, how, how can you correct that? Can we change it? Can we change our bio? Yeah. Uh, yeah, actually, yes. Uh, but it takes time because, I mean, it's about the, the, the changing the balance, right? So there are a few things that you can do with changing that. After you know from the gut health test or, or the gut microbiome test, then you start changing by the diet pattern. You have to be having a strict diet pattern or a specific diet pattern so that you could get all the good bacteria back. And you would provide that for me? Yeah, correct, correct. Uh, second one is the probiotics. Probiotic is actually, we are not taking it to replace something. We are taking it to be like a nanny or, or a nurturing person. To the good one that we are having right it may stay inside a bit the probiotic that we take but actually the the the, the its function is to create a balance uh, to help the good one to grow a little more uh, or to like divide themselves a little more so that's how probiotic use uh, 
Uh, thirdly, this is a, a, in a little bit more extreme case. Like let's say if, if they have severe dysbiosis, dysbiosis means disturbing of the microbiome, like really severe and create other problems. Like let's say the opportunistic infection from the C. difficile. Then sometime with the recurrent of the C. difficile, we'll use the fecal microbiota transplant, which is actually, it's, it's derived from the, uh, the healthy stool. We extract it, we get the bacteria and we transplant into the bowel. So that is another, another, another type of treatment as well. So basically it divides into simple treatment, diet, lifestyle change, uh, midway treatment like probiotics, and then fecal microbiota transplant. This changing diet is causing obesity and I'm quite horrified at uh, some of the youngsters and the amount of weight that they're gaining from right. this modern fast food diet that's being adopted, particularly in Bangkok. Right. What happens if somebody becomes morbidly obese and they come to you? Mm -hmm. Is there an opportunity to um, adjust their microbiome or, mm -hmm. and I believe the hospital also does, um, gastric bands as well yeah, right. yeah. so um, it, does that all work together to provide a better microbiome so consulting with you uh, you could give me advice on diet uh, recommend probiotics and then how long does it take for my mi microbiome to flourish and be the right type of bacteria uh, the changing of, of microbiome is a little tricky uh, because it's it's all living things we are living things, the bacteria is li are all living things as well. So it's quite tricky. So uh, no normally, uh, if the dysbiosis is, is not too much, or, or if you would like to change, there are some research study that it takes around like three to six months. Oh, okay. Yeah, three to six months to change the pattern. Like let's say, I, I would say that the research actually said that from the meatarian or, or, or non-vegetarian, non-veg, to veg, but actually uh, this uh, to to different set of bacteria that, that are inside you, right? So basically, let's say if you, 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 you ask the meatarian to take vegetarian food for maybe like few months, the first few months still have bloating. That, that's why sometimes when we, when we change our diet pattern from, from non-veg to veg or from veg to vegan, then we start having a bit of problem because we cannot digest that properly. So from, from non-veg to veg, it takes around like six months to change. But actually there are around one third that won't change. But you will digest better. But the bacteria has not changed. But this is not a disease condition. We are talking about healthy to another healthy, right? So if it is a disease condition, normally we will take it around like uh, three months to six months. Well, but we will see the symptoms. But for obesity, because you were mentioning the obesity, that is a, the disease cause like uh, the irritable bowel syndrome or constipation or something that we use probiotics to help. Probiotics won't be the main, the main treatment anyway. We'll use as an, as an adjunct treatment. Yeah. So uh, for, for obesity, I think we'll need to see case by case because the, the microbiome in obesity is in the research part that show the association between obesity and abnormal microbiome, right? So actually, uh, I mean, that, that in future, there'll be some personal life probiotic in that for sure, I think. But right now, normally, if we use probiotics to, to, to help that, we can use as an adjunct. But it has to be the lifestyle change, the diet pattern, which is the most important thing. Uh, we'll go a little bit beyond. If we use the gut health test, in obesity, what we will know is we'll know the microbiome in the obesity. And we will know what food we should feed to get the end product, right? So now that would be, that, that, that would be a, a, a bit more clearer. Probiotics may not help reducing the obesity or reducing the weight. But knowing the gut, health, know, knowing the gut microbiome may help in terms of selecting the food so that we can get a, select of, a selection of the end product that we want. Then that may reduce in that part. If that doesn't work, then it goes to the interventions, like either gastric balloons, uh, sleeve gastrectomy or banding or bypass. 
then that is that is another 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 thing that we can use, or even the medication itself. So there, there's no quick fix to adjusting the, my microbiome. There's no magic pill pill you can give me, and I walk away, and suddenly within a day I've got it. It's lifestyle change, commitment right. over six right. months, right. and then maintaining that. Right. Um, if I have a good microbiome. Mm -hmm. Um, am I going to have a better outlook on life, maybe less uh, susceptible to depression, and have a longer life? Does that help with longevity? We group in three groups. We call it live well, think well, and feel well with the microbiome parts. So when we analyze the microbiome, we will uh, give a score in these three parts. Live well means you don't have any other disease, you don't have the risk for the disease, or, or the risk of the bowel symptoms, heart condition, cholesterol, obesity. So live well. So think well, that helps you with the immune system, help you with the brain, with the nerves, right? So feel well, that is the mental health, right? So, so three parts that we are consider. Uh, this may be a little different compared to the, 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 the probiotics that you, uh, the gut microbiome that has been advertised or something. It's a little different because I, that's what I said, that it's not a replacing one thing to another thing. It's just creating a balance inside you then, then you, you, you get that kind of condition back. Uh, you can uh, prevent some other disease or you can reduce the, serious, the severity of the disease or you can feel well in terms of the mental health or stress. And you can also like, use all your immune a little bit better. So that's how the microbiome helps. Because that's the, actually that's the function of the microbiome. It's not just a digest. It creates the balance of the immune. It triggers the immune itself. It creates a balancing of the neuro, the, the, the transmission between one thing to one thing in your body. So that's, that is its function. And it is a defense mechanism for the, for the bacteria or for the disease, for some disease. So if we can change that, or, or if we can help that, then, then we would get that three groups of the condition back as well. And also, uh, it, it takes time, even the probiotic takes time. It won't be just like, okay, you take for a few weeks and then you'll be fine. Uh, that condition can be in, let's say, you have a quick diarrhea. You have an infectious diarrhea from eating something. Then you can take probiotics to help uh, instantly. Then, then yet, that is yes. But if you need to change, uh, please keep in mind that before this, before you create a, a community, a bacterial community in your body, you take almost 10, 20 years changing it to something is not easy it's like changing that, that that's what i said you are having another country inside you <laughs> so changing the country is not easy it takes time yeah but not that hard i mean if you keep your your habits quite good if you maybe like take probiotics to help uh, or in in severe case the fecal microbiota transplant those would, those would help you anyway. And for the test, if I came here and I wanted the test, right. can it be done within a day or what's, mm -hmm. the, what's the process? Do I have to bring along, uh, do, am I consulted first and bring along a stool sample or blood right. sample? How does it work? Okay, actually the test collects only stool samples. Uh -huh. uh, and uh, you can come to the hospital, uh, maybe like visit a doctor, see a consultant, just uh, see, see him for a cons consultation just a bit. Or could it be done by telemed? Yeah, even by telemed. And then the hospital would send the package to you. It takes around three weeks. The result takes around three weeks. Um, to, because we need to extract the DNA, we need to analyze, and we need to group into the, the, the community and then report the, the result. So that takes around three weeks. And then you get the result after that. Then, then we will discuss. After that, you'll need to come to the hospital or use telemedication service. Uh, so that we'll discuss with you like what kind of change that you need or what kind of thing that you need or what is the result. Dr. Kultep, thank you for sharing your expert knowledge with us today. Thank you also to Vimmer Hospital for hosting the venue. If you liked this episode, please like and subscribe because your health matters. Music